What is up, everybody? Dan and the Fireman here. In today's episode of Rescue 911, we're going to be talking about these two smart riders right here. They're actually in the chat during the live stream. We're able to give us some information. That's why it's a little bit longer of a video, but we're going to be talking about this. We're going to be seeing what they did to rescue another rider that crashed. Yeah. Long story short, it's a concussion and a lot of issues. This is why you need to make sure you have your own trauma kit. We have a rescue kit on MotorcycleTrainingConcepts.com. I was out here practicing with my tourniquet. A lot of cool things in here, guys. A lot of information and a lot of tools to save another person's life. Does it have to be a motorcycle rider? If you have this at home, let's say you fall down the stairs, break your leg. Anyways, we're going to talk about that in class. Let's get in there and talk and hang out and stuff. All right. All right. All right. Let's do it. All right, so here we go. We're we able to show you this video, and I hope that as many people as possible will see the reaction and behavior of these two bikers. Okay, so this is full gear. Okay, we're going to rescue another rider. So this is part of the smart rider principles. Rescue another rider. Okay, good. So somebody's calling 911. The rider is conscious, trying to sit down. We're talking over. We're taking over. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Neip sabrajo. Good, good, good. Oh, I'll stay out of the way. Good, 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 good. Do an assessment. Okay, good. If they go unconscious, it's 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 one thing. Dobre, dobre. Doesn't doesn't change the fact that you could have back injuries just because you have a back protector. Buď v kľude, buď v kľude. Good, 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 good. If they're talking to you, they're breathing. That's good. On the right side. So that puts you in that right spot. Okay. The back. Good. Good. This is good. Good. Left leg, okay. Lava noha, okay. So we got right back, left leg. No, but so we start thinking of mechanism of injury. Feeling too hot, want no. It doesn't matter. Sorry, man. You're gonna be uncomfortable. You got in a crash. You're uncomfortable. Ne, ne, ne možme, ne možme. Good, 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 good. Very good. Ne hipsa vôbec. Skús. Len skús dýchať. Nemôžeme ti dať dole prílbu naozaj. Pre tvoje dobro, dobre? Teraz to musíš šilku vydržať a bude dobre. Very good. <laughs> oh. You just joke around, you know, play with them a little bit. Len ostaň tak ako si, najlepšie. I know, I know, I know. It, but you, you were just in a crash. Vydrž, vydrž. We gotta think about the future. Oh. Vydrž. Good. Just talk to him. Just make small talk. Maybe loosen up the chin strap, but don't take the helmet off. Good. Period. Perfect. Okay. You can unzip the jacket. That's fine. Ne, 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 môžeme sa posadiť teraz určite. Môžeme ti len podložiť hlavu, Max. Just for a little relief. That's, that right there is fine. Being gentle with it. No. I mean, maybe that right there will be like, okay, I'm good now. Ano, ano, nehybeme. Len, len, len moje. Má ťažko na. Jo. Okay, now. Okay. I'll shut up. Uh, hurting. Okay. Uh, inability to answer a simple question. What's your name? How old are you? What day is it today? Koľko máš rokov? Yeah. Uh, Very good. Okay, the day it is, that's a, that's a good question. Asking like what your name is and how old you are, like you don't even know that. So how are you going to, how are you going to be able to quantify that? Yeah. Good. Always emphasize the helmet. You can have a traumatic brain injury with a helmet on, easily. A concussion is a traumatic brain injury. Oh, that, yeah, he, he's got something. You see how he's just kind of blank staring out? Okay, now it's about supportive. 
It's about being supportive. Yep. It's a TBI. Yeah. Okay. There you go. So he's coming back. It's rebooting. His brain is rebooting okay. right now. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> Ambulance is struggling to get to the scene. So this is why we need bystander assistance training. That's exactly why. That right there, you know, sometimes the ambulance can't get there in time, so that's why we need to be able to rescue another rider. And that's one of the things that I have here. So just real quick, um, I'm remaking some of these, but I sent out a bunch of these uh, to those that donated quite a bit to the Distinguished Gentleman's Ride. Let's go ahead and put this up here. I know it's a little blurry. Let's go ahead and make it a little bit better. So right here, you know, it says, be smart and rescue the rider. So remain calm, call 911, or tell someone to. And then we saw that at the beginning. Ensure your own safety. So I'm going to talk a little bit about traffic hazards. Stop the bleeding. It doesn't look like there's any bleeding, but we can't tell because we haven't cut anything open, but that's perfectly fine. Quickly assess the severity. And on the back side, I talk about head injuries, spinal cord injuries, shock symptoms, and then what to do for treatment when it comes to a lot of those things. So we're going to go ahead and just briefly talk about this because there's so much that went good. There's not much I have to even uh, adjust to this, but I'm just going to go ahead and give a little bit more info on a few of these things. They're probably blurring the blood on his face. That's probably what's happening. All right. Uh, I found the video. Ryder had broken collarbone, both sides, nine broken ribs, broken leg, uh, fractured knee on one leg, broken shoulder blade, ruptured liver. Ruptured liver, you can bleed out quick. Oh, nothing about his uh, head injury, 82. I hope that as many people as possible will see the reaction and behavior of these two bikers. These, before we even jump into it, these two definitely want the crew. I want to ride with these two because they actually, you know, if I crash and I have a traumatic brain injury, all my training is out the window. Like, I, my brain is restarted. It's in survival mode. Hopefully I do the right thing, but I doubt it. So I want people around me that will be able to help me. So just because, you know, you have one person in the, in the crew that you're riding with that has the training, once if they crash, do you know what to do? That's why you want to have multiple people trained, multiple people trained, all right? So these guys are going to get off, acquire and utilize personal protective equipment. They have, they're they smart riders, all right? I don't have to talk about it. They're absolute smart riders. Love to have them in the crew. So my biggest concern is what's behind us. Okay, maybe, whatever. What's behind us? Well, all this traffic, okay? So you see how there's traffic going this way? So who is over here? What's, what's coming from this direction? That is my biggest concern. So that's part of ensuring your safety. First, you got to remain calm, which they absolutely did. And they, you know, direct somebody to call 911 or the emergency services. And, they, and these people are. So boom, already done. But your safety, once if somebody's hauling ass, not paying attention, and they hit you, it's a, it's a no bueno situation. So we're going up to here. So the guy on the left is already calling the ambulance. Boom, great. Nahipsa, <laughs> nahipsa. So don't move. The rider's conscious, trying to sit down while the other men are discussing something. So we're taking over. So the men discussing stuff on the side, they're not helping the person. They're doing what they know how to do, and they're calling 911. Any unnecessary movement could eventually worsen his injuries. Yep, good. So get some information. So like I said, I don't want to go through the whole thing. So let's just go over some of these things. So just taking a quick look at this. We're trying to gather some information. If he is talking, if he is talking, that means he is breathing. Okay, so that means his airway is at least open. It could get worse. Always want to monitor it. That's why you constantly talk to them, you know, every couple minutes if you have to. But get the main baseline assessment going. Don't take the helmet off. If he's breathing, you're good. You don't need to breathe for him. Now, all this gear, this bad of an incident, I'd be taking it off. I would. So in the trauma kits that I'm going to be selling pretty soon, it comes with these rescue cards. I just got a 100 of them just showed up today at the firehouse. We're going to be... Uh, making sure that all the quality is good. We're going to be adding some things to it before we start getting them out there. But they come with trauma shears so and a blanket. So here's the thing. I'd be cutting the sides of his clothes. So cut the side, cut the underside of this. Uh, you can zip this open, cut the outer side or the inner side, whatever you want to do, one of the sides, and then you know cut the side like that. That way you open it up and you can actually check for any external bleeding. Bleeding is going to be the number one cause of, of deaths before ambulances show up. Okay, If they bleed out, they're dead. doesn't matter. doesn't matter if they have good lungs. doesn't matter if they have a good heart. If there's no water in the pump or no blood in the, in the veins and arteries, nothing can really happen. So open that up. See what's up. Leave the helmet on because he's breathing. He's doing fine. You don't, we want to be very purposeful with our movements. 
So back protector in the jacket, trying to get some information when it comes to, you know, possible back injuries. So here's the thing, back protector doesn't save everything. You know, he has a helmet on, has a traumatic brain injury. So you can have a broken back with a back protector. It depends on the mechanism of the crash. So just the jacket, so possibly back injury. So relax, relax, be still. So he's uh, complaining of his back pain and left leg. So it, overall, depending on what we see, it's, it's going to be all over body injuries. So he's going to have broken bones everywhere. Now, those bones can puncture organs. Those bones can, can, can lacerate an artery and a bunch of tissue, which will bleed out. So biggest concern, because uh, I think uh, 82 said there was a liver laceration. Uh, that's, a, that's a solid organ, one of the, if not the biggest. I think it is the biggest solid organ. I, I'm drawing a blank right now. But that right there, what that means is there's a lot of blood flow, a ton of it. So if you lacerate a liver, whoo, you can bleed out internally quick. And there's not much you can do about it. Not much you can do about it. Yo, yo, ne hipsa. Don't move your arms either. So yeah, moving your arms, you know, it's one thing, you know, just be careful. My biggest concern is going to be airway, breathing, circulation mainly circulation. So I like to go CAB instead of ABC, but take a quick look at the mechanism on that bike. Damage, 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 damage. Whew. All right, the rider's complaining about feeling too hot and wants us to remove the helmet. Now, they're going to want to say that. They're going to want to do that. But here's the thing. It's like, hey, buddy, you were in a crash. You're going to be uncomfortable. That's the reality of things. You're going to be uncomfortable, and it's going to be painful. That's what it is. But if I take the helmet off, it might not be painful for longer because you're not going to be alive much longer. So let's leave it on. I'll try to make it easier for you. Let's work on this. Are you hot? Go ahead and open the gear, open everything else out. And it seems like uh, we do have some people that were on scene. Go ahead and start writing in the comments if you were on scene. I, I, I can't see the chat too well. I'm focused on this. So don't move at all. Just try to breathe. Very good. Very good. Uh, hold on now for a little while and it'll all be good. So just constantly reassure the patient what's going on. But you notice how this whole time we haven't really checked if there's any bleeding anywhere. Now, with jeans like this, you might be able to see some dark red or darkness, you know, fluids. Might be a little bit wet. That, that's when you can kind of tell. But if it's already seeping through, I mean, we're losing some blood here. <laughs> so Magic, Magic Guy... R6 was on scene. Which one are you, buddy? Oh. Dobre bude, neboj sa, len, len, len ostaň, tak... so, yeah, stay as you are, ideally. So if you don't feel comfortable moving the patient in the anatomical position, uh, supine, then don't worry about it. Leave them as they are, as best you possibly can. Yeah, which one were you, Magic? Uh, the camera guy or the guy putting his hand on his belly? So if you leg him back and head are hurting, then you got to stay as you are. Exactly, exactly. I mean, traumatic brain injuries, there's nothing you can really do uh, on scene. That's going to be all uh, hospital care. Uh, back injuries, same thing. The only thing you can do on scene is rescue somebody by uh, doing rescue breathing or stopping the bleed if there's any type of external bleeding. Now, that right there on his hand, that's just a, a capillary, maybe a little bit of venous blood, but it stopped. It clotted up. It's done. But the problem is when you have an arterial ble uh, bleed with a brachial artery and then a femoral artery, that's not going to stop itself, and you're going to bleed out quick. So you got to be careful with that. So hand on the belly. So we got uh, the guy with the red everything, hand on the belly. He's in the chat right now. I'm keeping an eye on it. Um, thanks for the... For the uh, you, you rescued another rider, man. You, you did an amazing job. Absolutely rescued this rider. You can come sit up front. Honorary crew member. I wish I could give you a YouTube membership because you did amazingly well. Very calm, everything. Hey, this. Good job. You just helped out this person. Maybe saved his life. It's hard for me to breathe like this. You're going to get that a lot because then you start having adrenaline. You start having uh, higher oxygen demand just because your heart rate goes up. So if your heart rate goes up, that means you're pumping more blood, which you have more hemoglobin circulating and, and depositing oxygen, picking up carbon dioxide, and it's constantly just, it's like, we need more, we need more, we need more because it's fight or flight. Well, right now, the body doesn't need it. It doesn't need it. You're laying down. You're not running. So what's happening is your oxygen drive is, is, is increasing, increasing, increasing just because your heart rate is increasing, increasing, increasing. So how do we help that out? Talking to the patient, maybe calming them down, helping them out. So that if we can decrease 
that need for oxygen because we're helping them out and talking to them and reassuring them and their heart rate goes down and their heart rate goes down to a stable level, then maybe their breathing will go down too. But also, you never know if their heart rate is going up, up, and up, and up, and they're bleeding out, 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 out. It's trying to compensate. So that's a shocky situation. Despite his discomfort, we can't emphasize, yeah, very good. So we're going to move on with this. <laughs> For a little relief now you can you can do that that's perfectly fine that's perfectly fine now one way you can check the extremities without you know having to really take things off you can just kind of gently go down it so take a quick look so let's say this is the this is the arm so i'm just going to grab and just squeeze a little bit i'm just going to do this okay does this hurt does this hurt does this hurt if you're doing this and all of a sudden you have a little bit of blood on your hands there's bleeding so that's what you want to check but you can easily palpate each leg each arm do as you need to go down if you can't no, cut no, it. No, lend, lend, lend me away. King Julian, the, the cameraman, is in the chat too. Thank you, 82. Tony, appreciate it. Hey, both of you guys did an amazing job. An amazing job. You should be proud of what you did. You should be absolutely proud of what you did. I want riders like you two. Let's just, you know, we, we don't even have to say any much. Uh, check out this video. Did an amazing job. I just want to I just want to put you guys on screen. So that's you magic, right? So uh I, I'm saying magic, but it's probably wrong. Uh magic here, magic here. You, you did an amazing job. Absolutely good job. King Julian, great job. You rescued another rider. It's you, I hope nobody ever has to do this. I hope nobody ever has to do this. But here's the thing, it's the reality of motorcycle riding. You know, you could be situationally aware, fundamental skills have full gear, but if some dumb dumb comes out and does something or something completely just fails and you crash and you get extremely hurt, I hope there would be somebody there to rescue you. That's just the reality of it. We need a full circle safety when it comes to motorcycle riding. It's not just one thing to go out riding and, and get the best track times and be amazing in a parking lot and we're just like, you know, doing the greatest, like we are so amazing, so amazing, so amazing. That's only one aspect of safe riding. That's the only, it's one aspect of getting home safely. That's my main thing. I don't even care about safe riding. Getting home safely is the thing I want. That's only one aspect. Being able to be situationally aware, that's one aspect. Getting gear, one aspect. Rescuing another rider, one aspect. Teaching and mentoring another rider, that makes you better because you're having to teach them every single thing and learn all these different things. And you're, you're an expert at that point. If you can teach and mentor somebody, we can't just have one aspect. We need to get home safely. And that means rescue another rider just in case. Just in case. You probably helped this person get home safely. Amazing job. I have nothing else to say. King Julian. Nothing, nothing else to say. King Julian and Mag Magikir 6. Yeah, 60 miles per hour. Amazing job. Part of being a smart rider is acquiring and utilizing personal protective equipment, so make sure you grab yourself a jacket just like this one from RevZill using the link in the description. It's an affiliate link. It helps me out. No extra cost to you. Plus, it lets RevZill know that the DDF and crew is pretty badass, and they actually grab some gear. Anyways, click that link. I'll see you soon.